Mori is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Let me say that again. Daryl Mori is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Thank you, man. I just love, I mean, there's so many good things. There's so many good things about it. There's multiple angles, multiple people were recording this. He did it in China, which is just the best because if you guys remember a few years back, Maury had a little run-in with uh, the uh, Republic of China, and I, I don't think they're huge fans. I mean, he got an applause break, right? He got an applause break. This is so good. It, one more time. Let's just do it again. Maury is a liar. And I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Let me say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Fuck Morey! I love it. I love it. It's so good. I, there, I don't even know where to begin because there's just so much like juicy goodness, right? So over the weekend, the report comes out. I think it was a Woji bomb, right? Woji bomb. And it's like, hey, listen, listen, trade talks died down, which I think is funny because that insinuates that there were trade talks. And I'm not really sure what kind of trade offers we've seen for Harden so far. And then like an hour later, it was almost like it, it reminds me of like when, you know, maybe some gossip's about to come out about a celebrity and they like let the celebrity know before the gossip comes out. They're like, hey, BT dubs. We got pictures of you dating or pictures of you cheating, I guess would be a better example. And so then they have their response ready to go. So that report comes out and then immediately James Harden is like, okay, yeah, well, there's not a chance in hell I'm showing up to camp, which I loved. I loved that that response is ready. And that would have been enough to talk about this morning. What James Harden's strategy is right now, because I don't know if there is one, like, I don't know. It's not like he's helping himself out. He's not helping his own trade value out. He's just kind of torpedoing both his value and the Sixers' chance to get anything in return. But I do want to go, like, I'm I'm always quick to dunk on Harden. I, like, we should say, right, I was listening to the Hoop Collective a little bit this morning, and they were talking about, was it like five of six years he finished top three in MVP voting when he was in Houston? So we'll give Harden, a, yes, Harden is very good at basketball. Harden is very good at basketball. Let's get that out of the way. He forces his way out of Houston, right? This is just like a little timeline for you. Forces his way out of Houston, and how does he do it? He does it by, I, I don't know, by buying a fat suit. Like, I do think we do need some sort of serial-esque podcast to figure out how he did what he did in Houston on his way out. So he did that where all of a sudden he looked 60 to 70 pounds heavier. There was that that play with John Wall, right, where he just kind of like throws the ball out of bounds and looks at John Wall like, what, bro? Get that. Get that. All right. And then Harden moves his way to Brooklyn. He gets over to Brooklyn. But let's just talk about like his strategy so far, like how this has looked, right? So he gets to the Nets, turns down the, and I got some of this from uh, Yaron Weitzman over on, um, uh, on Twitter, who uh, I forget who he writes for now, but he wrote that great Sixers book, uh, Trust, not Trust the Process, but it was called, uh, I'll, fi I'll figure it out. I'm sorry, Aaron, not that you watch this, but I'm doing a bad job. So he turns down the max extension for the Brooklyn Nets. Then he takes a pay cut to re-sign with the Sixers, says it's about winning, then spends the season hinting about how unhappy he is in Philly. He asks for a max deal from the Sixers. When he doesn't get it, decides, hey, dude, I'm out. I'm out in Philly. I'm all done. Then demands, opts back in, demands a deal uh, to the the Clippers. He says, I'm only going to L uh, to LA. There, there's no trade there. And then just like firebombs with this quote. And I just like, I feel like he's made multiple bad decisions. Like, I don't know who's in his, who's in his like tight circle. Who are the people that are like, dude, you know, what would be a good business decision. Like who is he bouncing these ideas off of? Cause it's so bad. And I, I know I keep, listen, if we learn, if we learn that Daryl Morey was like, dude, if you resign for less, I'm going to give you a max deal. And then, because that's what it seems like that that's happened, right? If that happened, that is, that is fucked. As illegal as it is to make these handshake, wink, wink deals before you're allowed to make deals, that's messed up. That's messed up if he did that and, and then Morey reneged. That's terrible. I still keep going back to the Christmas Day game. And I wish, I want somebody else, somebody smarter to me, smarter than me to like revisit this 
because people have better sources or whatever. But if you guys remember the Christmas Day game, like five minutes, not five minutes, a half hour before the game tips off, the first game on the Christmas Day slate was uh, Knicks and Sixers. And about a half hour before the game starts, Woj drops that report that was like, oh, there's real smoke behind Harding, Harden heading to Houston. That, that was kind of a, that was alliteration. Harden heading to Houston. There was like some real smoke around that. And it was such, it was the weirdest kind of like, why? Why did this information come out? Now, if you want to give Harden the benefit of the doubt, because it's clear it came from Harden's camp. I don't want to hear anybody else say it didn't come from Harden's camp. But maybe he like saw the writing on the wall that maybe Maury wasn't going to give him the money that he said he was going to get. So then he was like, okay, fine. Let me, let's throw some smoke out there. Let's throw some smoke out there about this. But I, I wonder too, like if, if Harden overplayed his hand a little bit. And then this came back to bite him. But I I was ready this morning to talk about how like this there's no offers for Harden right now, which I think it kind of puts him in this like weird spot, right? Where he he if he was this pissed off, if he was this pissed off at Philly because Maury decided not to give him the money that he said he was going to get, then I, he would have just opted out, and then somebody else would have paid him. Another team would have given him a big contract. But that didn't happen. So he had to opt in to take the money because it doesn't make any sense. If you're that pissed off, why would you opt in and then take it and then demand a trade request? If anything, don't give Philly anything in return. Just leave. Just go get paid somewhere else. But clearly those deals weren't there. Like, I don't, again, it makes me wonder who are the people around him? Like, who are the people that are like, yeah, dude, Harden, I think you can get a five-year, $250 million contract. Like, who's saying that? Who's saying that? And so he had to opt in because he had to get the money that was guaranteed what was like 38 or 39 million. And then he's like, oh, and then I'll demand a trade. I'm not going to play. I, this is going to get super ugly because I don't, I, I do feel like in, in a kind of a funny way, Harden is calling Maury's bluff. Oh, you like to get, I, it's time to get, it's time to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Oh, cool. Very cool guys. Uh, some the, I love your poetry that you guys are sharing back and forth, but it does feel like he's like, oh, I saw you handle Ben Simmons. I know you're ready to lock in. Well, get ready. Ben Simmons put, I think Trey tweeted this out. Ben Simmons put a phone in his wallet. What's Harden coming? I mean, a phone a phone in his pocket during practice. What's Harden coming? Harden's not going to be showing up to practice. But I think, I think the best, can someone say publicity stunts since we the people? Oh yeah, this wasn't, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't improvised. I don't think Harden, I don't think Harden was doing a little yes and with the Chinese media over there that I don't think that's what was going on. Harden absolutely was ready to just be like, let's let's throw some bombs. Uh, Stan says, why does Dame get silenced by the NBA, but Harden can go scorched earth? Well, Stan, this happened a couple hours ago. So I imagine, I imagine we'll hear some other stuff. <laughs> I do love Miami fans, though. If this was happening in Miami, Adam Silver would be so pissed off. Everybody screws Miami. You guys are unbelievable. I, I heard that on the uh, the Hoop Collective, I think last week, right, where he can't uh, not – because if he does breach his contract, there's a crazy thing in there where in the last year he he won't be able to play on another team. He wouldn't even be able to play in another league. So if Harden was like, you know what, fuck Philly. I'm not playing in Philly ever again. I'm not going to play in the NBA again. I'm going to go play in China. I'm going to go play in Italy. I'm going to go on Monaco with Kemba Walker. Philly would be able to be like, no, you can't do that either. One other thing that I'm really excited, we need like an Embiid watch. We need an Embiid watch drop because Joel Embiid famously handles things well. Not one to, you know, fire off tweets that make things uncomfortable. I am fascinated to see how they deal with this. Because if you take Harden off the Sixers, uh, there's they're bad, right? Like we can make fun of Harden all we want. He led the league in assists. He was really, really good through most of the year. Fair, uh, faded off a little bit the second half of the regular season and then did his Harden stuff in the playoffs where he had a couple of monster games and a couple of, of flat ones. But if you take Harden off the Sixers, that's a, that's like a five, six, seven seed, right? Because I would put the Knicks ahead of them. I'd put the Cavs ahead of them. Obviously, the Celtics and the Bucks ahead of them. The Heat ahead. Of, like a lot of teams are going to be better than them. Uh, and I, I think that I think the Sixers are going to be in trouble. So, and I can only imagine what Embiid will say, both publicly and privately. And he's already been kind of poking the bear a little bit with those comments that he. I forget who the the conversation was with, but he was already kind of poking it a little bit. Like, hey, yeah, I'm uh, whether it's in Philly or not, I'm ready to win a championship. And 
you know, if you start, you go into training camp and there's no, there's no James Harden. You're looking around. Okay. It's like me. It's Maxi. It's Tobias Harris. Who are the other dudes they lost? They lost George Yang. They lost, um, uh, Shake Milton. So now you're just like, dude, well, we got, well, at least you got PJ Tucker. Uh, you know, I, I think that team's going to be in a lot of trouble and all it takes, all it takes is them starting off like, you know, eight and 12. Because the Philly media and the Philly fan base famously understand a group of people. I imagine they lose their shit too. So I I think this is going to be spicy, spicy, spicy. Honestly, if I I think they're in a lose-lose situation. Because even if Daryl Moore is like, you know what, fine, pull the plug. Let's go get freaking, let's get Marcus Morris, Robert Covington, Brandon Boston Jr. Let's just get him out of here. That's it's just not going to be enough to, you're just going to create another problem. So this is the, the process. The process has been processed. I think that's a wrap. I think that's a wrap. And if you're a Knicks fan right now, you saw RJ drop 31 over the weekend for all oh, Canada, right? You see RJ go ham over the weekend. Unless I read a fake tweet, I'm pretty sure he went ham. Uh, you're already just like stretching out. You're stretching out right now. RJ Barrett, Quentin Grimes, Every pick we have for the next 35 years for Joel Embiid right now. And that's, and I mean, and that is why the Knicks, like they, they lucked out by not getting Donovan Mitchell. That's why they're not really talking about Dame at all. And their roster doesn't make sense for Dame either, but that's, that's what you're waiting for. Woo! Regulator said the 76ers will have a ton of cap space next season. So one more chance to keep Embiid. Yeah, but who are the guys they're getting? Who are these massive free agents that put them over like, in the neck, I don't, I don't think that's it. And remember, like two weeks ago, everyone was like, well, actually, the Sixers are going to have two max spots. And now it's actually just one max spot. And there's no, who's going? Like, what max guys are you getting? Nobody, I, you would have to trade for them. Because nobody, none of, like, the max guys even hit the market anymore. Right? We're already seeing it. AD, Jalen Brown, all these guys just get their deals done. And then if they want to move teams, they request a trade. So you need someone disgruntled that's going to force their way to Philly which I don't, I can't remember a time in history where someone has forced their way to Philly. So I don't know. I think they are in trouble. Um, can we chalk up this up as another reason the franchise shouldn't spend an extended time tanking? I mean, yeah, I guess so. I guess we could blame, we could blame tanking. I don't know. I don't know if it's tanking though. Like they were right in on a beat. I, they just, I, I don't want to make excuses. They get super unlucky, dude. Ben Simmons makes... What all rookie team, rookie of the year, all rookie team, two time all star. Was he a defensive player of the year? I know he's all defensive team, does all this shit, right? And then, I mean, you can't that's unlucky where he just kind of falls apart, right? Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, sexually. Who knows? Uh, Mike, what's your prediction? Maury sells, Harden leaves. Where does he go? I don't know. I mean, if Harden's saying he's only going to the Clippers. I think Maury do, does have to pull the plug on it because I, I do think it's going to be it's going to get uglier. Like I, I don't see a world in which well, I mean clearly that you don't come back from that. You don't come back from that because it wasn't it wasn't like Norm Nixon talking to the press about Magic Johnson's return. It wasn't like a impromptu. You caught him off guard. He said something he shouldn't have said. Then you can like you know get behind closed doors. Hey, my bad. I don't like the way that this has been going. I'm frustrated. I don't think you hear me or respect me. We're not on the same page. They work things out. They move on. Right. That's not what that was. That was James Harden. This yeah, this wasn't an improv show. This was this was Harden probably went to like 15 different open mics in China before this event. He was like, let me test a couple of things out. Let me let me see how the crowd reacts if I just call Maury a liar one time. And they're like, ah, I didn't get that many laughs. So he's like, what if I let's workshop it a second time? Let's go to another, let's go to another coffee house in China and let's do it a second time. And then he says it twice. He's like, bang, got him, got him, applause break. So I, I just don't think you come back from it. So I, he, he's got to go hard. And, and, and they just don't have any trade value. Like, I'm just trying to think of any other, like, not only do they not have any trade value because the rest of the league now knows that Harden is not going to be playing for Philly. So it's not like you have to overpay because there's no leverage. But if you even take that away, there was no leverage to begin with. Like we were saying earlier, no one was lining up. When Harden said, I want to be traded, it's not like five different teams called up Daryl Moore and was like, okay, let's do this. Or no one wants him for the price that it's going to cost. Because again, it's a one-year rental. It's not like he's under contract for the next 40 years. 
So then you're like, wait, what assets am I giving up to then for one season? Because then you have to bank on Harden re-signing. Or, and do you want to be paying Harden late into his 30s? Like, what about Harden's game? I shouldn't say his game. What about Harden's work ethic? Uh, extracurriculars makes you think that at 37, Harden is going to be mwah, very good at basketball as an NBA player. Uh, Groat says Harden picks for DeRozan, and then the Bulls just let Harden walk at the end of the season. Bulls enter a rebuild. I mean, that sure, that makes sense. But also, if that's the direction you were going to go, why the fuck didn't you do that already? Why did you pay Vucci main as much as you did? Nikola Vucevic, 20 million a year for what? Uh, what, what playoff team does Harden make better? I think Harden on Toronto. Like if you were getting rid of uh, Harden for, but like the, if it was like Gary Trent Jr. in picks and now you have James, now you don't need Scotty Barnes to play point guard for you the whole time. And now you have Harden, Barnes, OG, Siakam. Cause you like you have no ball handling up. We the North, no ball handling. Like I think he would make sense there for that team. I mean, you're not that. I, like even Gary Trent Jr. might be too much for that team. I do think the Clippers are like the Clippers would be a great spot, especially because the Clippers are going to have to give up dog shit to get them. And now you can like Russ can really just run that second unit. So when Russ is on, awesome. And when he's not, fine. And then you have Harden who can like get. Paul George and Kawhi the ball in their spots. I don't know. I I really that to me makes the Clippers pretty dangerous. I would still never pick the Clippers because they don't play basketball together a lot. But I do think he would make the most. I I mean Harden is still good. I think if Harden has to be like your main dude, it's probably bad. But if he's like your third dude, I don't know. If he's your he led the league in assists this year.